Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Lucia and this is Lulu's Leaves. So today I'm going to be trying to do a little vlog style video. I have been trying to make one of these videos but I fail every single time because I just don't feel like it's interesting enough. So today I'm going to do my best to make a fun and interesting vlog for you guys. I have a few things that I have to do here at home. I have a lot of plants that need to be watered, so I'm gonna go through and water those guys, show you what they look like before they're watered, and I'll come back in the afternoon and maybe show you guys what they look like after they've perked up a bit. I've also been doing a little bit of pest management as I've seen a few mealybugs on some of my Hoyas. Um, honestly, mealybugs don't scare me a ton unless it's like a huge infestation, but that's not really the case. So I'm just going through with my pre-made, or not pre-made, my homemade spray, but I'll show you guys what is in that. And then I might take you guys to work with me as well. I know you guys really, really enjoyed that last video of me showing you guys what I do at work. So I'm definitely going to try to film some stuff today for you guys. But before we get into today's video, if you aren't already subscribed, please hit that button down below so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. And if you enjoy this video, you can give it a thumbs up. If you hate it, you can give it a thumbs down. With that being said though, let's get straight on into today's video. All right, so the first thing that I wanna show you guys is actually my plant stands. I've recently moved some stuff around even since my plant room tour because I felt that I had my plants a little bit too close together for comfort in the winter time. I am terrified that I'm going to find some pests and there's gonna be no way to stop it because they're all touching each other. So I've tried to space out my plants a little bit more. If you haven't already, I definitely recommend you trying to space out your plants for the winter time for that specific reason. So let me show you that. So this table here used to be where I had all of my orchids, but I've decided to kind of make this my anthurium table. So now I have my um, Doriaki, Forgetii, um, Radicans, Dresleri, my Crystallinum, and then I also have my Alocasia Black Velvet and my Syngonium Albopodophyllum here because these guys are kind of the oddballs. Everything else is pretty much philodendron in my collection, um, or at least my rare plant collection. So I've tried to keep those guys together and then the extra two little oddballs. Um, but this gives me so much more confidence that if I do find pests, I'm not going to have them be ravaging through my entire collection. This just makes me a little bit more confident that I'll be able to catch it and it'll, it'll just make me have a little bit more peace of mind. And then over here, you can see this shelf has kind of cleared out a bit or this table. I do need to actually go through and clean this. So I might do that before I leave for work. But um, yeah, all of my, oh, all of my philodendron are here and just a little bit more separated, which makes me, um, again, a lot happier. I do have my new Christmas, actually Thanksgiving cactus. It's living its best life. And yeah, I just have all of my philodendron on here for the most part. Um, a lot of them are putting out new growth, which is really exciting because, I mean, it is November, so things are slowing down, but I'm getting some nice new leaves on my Glorious here and my Squammy Ferrum. But yeah, definitely just gives me a bit more peace of mind when it comes to my plants. And then these are all of my orchids that I moved from the white table that you saw in the beginning. Um, they're just chilling back here. Most of these guys don't need a ton of sunlight to be happy. So yeah, they're kind of just going to get a little bit of the light from these grow lights. I'll actually move an arm over there um, once I have two hands, but um, I can just kind of point one of the arms towards the orchids there and they'll be much happier um, and they'll do just fine over here. 
but the light that you're seeing is just natural daylight. So they still are getting a decent amount of light. And then there's Bob. Hi, Bob. I also need to water this guy. The Plowmanii's are really, really great at telling you when they need water. Like you can see it's super droopy here. Um, and that's kind of it showing you that it is thirsty. And I'm totally okay with that. If plants wanna show me, I'm more than happy to uh, listen. The philodendron uh, fibrosum is very similar. Um, this one gets very, very droopy when it needs water. You can see it's already starting to droop a bit, but I like to wait until it kind of folds down. Yeah, that guy is also putting out a new leaf, but that has been a very slow process. All right, so I'm gonna go get my watering can and um, some all-purpose cleaner to clean off that tabletop so it's not so dirty. All right, so I am going to water this Plowmanii. You can see at this angle that it is super floppy. I definitely wanna show you guys when I come back from work how this guy is perked up because it is really, really cool to see that. So I like to just water this guy until I see that the majority of this pot is saturated because it is a clear pot. I'm able to see that. So I'll go once more here. And even if the entire pot isn't saturated, um, that's okay because I am going to leave it in this water that it's sitting in so that it can kind of absorb the rest of it and um, bottom water, I guess. If it still has water in the tray before I leave for work in about an hour, I will take the tray away. I also noticed that my begonia terrarium definitely needs some water, so I am going to actually go through and deep water that. I don't know if you guys saw the video of me showing you guys my new begonia terrarium, but I did actually say in that that I was only going to be misting that terrarium. That's false. I'm actually going to go through and water it with a watering can today, so we'll see how that goes. Okay, so here is the terrarium. Sorry about the glare, it's impossible not to get any glare, but I'm just gonna go through because you can see that some of these guys are a little bit sad, especially the passing storm there. So I'm gonna try to water this at least in that corner a bit more so that we can um, get that guy back standing up. These guys definitely will need some time to acclimate to this terrarium. So even if some of the leaves die off, I'm not too concerned. That's kind of normal, but we'll see. Hopefully I don't lose any full plants or anything like that, or nothing starts melting, but uh, I will definitely update you guys on this terrarium because I am quite proud of it and I'm hopeful that it will just thrive. I'll also try to update you guys on this guy when I come back from work to see if um, this has perked up at all. And yeah, so honestly, I've been having some mealybug issues. I've been finding them here and there. Again, I'm not super terrified of mealybugs, so I mean, it's it's not the end of the world in my in my eyes. But I did have to spray down my Hoya Australis Lisa. It's looking a little bit sad, but. I think it's just because it needed some water and I did water it last night. So I'll keep an eye on that guy just in case there's something going on that I'm not seeing. Maybe it has root mealies as well, but I'll keep an eye and uh, probably repot that guy. And then of course, my Hoya Compacta here had to get mealy bugs. That's not fun because there are so many little crevices that they can hide in. So yeah, basically all that I did was put some dish soap in here with my water. Um, I did put quite a bit of dish soap, but that's only because I was only using this on Hoyas and they do have stronger leaves than some of the aeroids. So definitely dilute the dish soap a lot if you're gonna use this for your aeroids, but yeah. I'm just trying to eradicate the problem. So that's all I do. And then this guy just kind of violently sprays them off. All right, and now I'm going to clean off my little table behind me. 
I'm just gonna use some paper towel and where's my cleaner? Yeah, so I'm just gonna use my paper towel and then I like using this multi-purpose kitchen cleaning vinegar. It works really, really well and if you like the smell of vinegar, which I actually don't, but I don't mind the smell of this now, um, yeah, it kind of smells. So <laughs> they do have other ones though, so if you don't like vinegar, um, this brand does have other scents. guys well that's basically it for the cleaning I'm probably gonna have to go head on to work now if I can film for you guys I definitely will but I can't promise anything if not I will definitely see you after work Alright guys, so I have a bunch of stuff that I'm going to repot. We have some philodendron tahiti cuttings, some Hoya obovada, there's a philodendron rugosum. This is one of my favorite plants. It's one of the ones with this really cool texture. It looks very leathery. And we've got some Cebu Blue cuttings to pot up. And then this Alocasia Cupria, which is really beautiful. So I'm just gonna get started. I'm just gonna mix up the soil and then we will get started. Okay, so this is my little station here. I'm just gonna start by basically dumping out anything that these plants are currently in. So this one is in sphagnum moss, and I think there's a little bit of bark and soil in there as well. Um, but this guy was rooting and it's now ready to be potted into some soil. So yeah, there's just some sphagnum in the roots here. So I'm going to make sure I get all of that off because it, if I don't take all the sphagnum out, It'll keep a little bit of extra moisture that's not really necessary anymore. And then we can go ahead and pop this guy up. So I just got a bit of soil here as a base. I'll just pour some soil around it. All right, and this guy is all good to go. I'll just water it once I've done all of the other plants, but it looks really cute in this pot. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna have enough room on my camera to do all of these guys for you, but I'm gonna do as many as I can. So here are the roots on the Alocasia cupria. It's looking super duper healthy, and it's just gonna go into this square pot. So again, I'll grab some soil for the base. Put this guy in there 
And you don't want to bury these too deep or you can get some rot, some stem rot. So I basically just like to cover the roots. And then we can tap the sides to make sure there's no air pockets. And if there are, we can just add some more soil. But that is the Cupria all done up. It looks awesome. And then I'll try to do one of each of the others for you guys. So we're gonna put these Tahiti cuttings into these pots here. And these are really easy rooters, so they're just gonna go straight into some soil and they're going to be placed in really high humidity so they can grow some nice roots. All right, and I'm just gonna continue doing that for these guys, um, but I'll move on to the obovata so you guys can see me do those. Looking good. So this is just in some bark right now, so I'm gonna get rid of that stuff. So this guy has some beautiful juicy roots going on, so we're gonna put that guy in here, in this cute pot. And these guys are really nice and splashy too. I'll show you this other one. It actually has pink splashing. Yeah, you can see that nicely there. It's really, really pretty. That's just from high light, I'm pretty sure. All right, so that guy's super cute and happy in there. And we'll move on to some of these Cebu Blue cuttings. These guys were just rooting in some water. They're gonna be a little tricky to get out of here. <laughs> So I'll pot these few leaves up together and then and we'll do the other ones as well. And these cuttings will always look a little bit funny when you first pot them up, but they'll grow into themselves. They'll kind of grow towards their light source and they'll figure themselves out. But yeah, that is it all potted up. I hope you guys enjoyed me showing you a little bit more of what I do at work at Secret Garden. Um, if you did, give it a thumbs up. <laughs> but uh, that's gonna be it from here. I will see you guys back at my house. All right guys, well I am back. It's not later this afternoon because unfortunately these days it gets dark at 5 p.m and I didn't want to film in the dark. So it is the next morning. I'm working today as well, but this is where the vlog is kind of going to end, unfortunately. But I did want to update you guys on the things that I was going to update you on. And also I bought a plant, so I'm really excited to show you that as well. Sorry about this, but uh, it's as good as it's gonna get this morning. So yeah, let me go show you everything that I said I was gonna show you. So we had spoken about the begonias here. Um, the passing storm there hasn't really perked up at all, but it doesn't look horrible. Um, all of the little babies are standing up just fine. It's just the one larger leaf that's looking a little bit heavy. But um, I'm just gonna keep an eye on this terrarium. Everything else looks okay, so yeah. That's where we're at with that. No new progress or anything. On the other hand though, I wanted to show you the um, Philodendron Plowmanii and look how much that has perked up. That was bent over completely yesterday. And this morning it is perky and not floppy anymore. <laughs> so that is one really cool thing about watering your plants after they've kind of been neglected for a little bit. Not that this one was neglected, but it was getting droopy, but it is very cool to watch them perk back up. 
Um, I also did a little bit more rearranging. So my Gloriosum is just a little bit further that way and a little bit further forward to make room for this beautiful new plant that I got. You guys saw this earlier in the video. I couldn't help it. This is honestly a plant that I never thought I would own, not because I never thought I would find it, but I honestly like didn't realize how much I loved it until I saw this big mature one. This here is a Monstera Pinata Partita, I believe that's how you pronounce it. Um, let me take it over here. This is all of it. It's really big, so sorry I can't get it all in frame here for you guys but it really, really is a beautiful, beautiful plant. So yeah, that is there to kind of fill up the background of my videos a little bit more. And yeah, the Squammy is really, really trying to put out this leaf, which is exciting. And I also moved my Fusispathum over here just to fill up this area a little bit more. Although things still aren't touching, so that makes me happy. <laughs> all right all right guys well that is going to be it for me I really really hope that you guys enjoyed this vlog if you did enjoy today's video make sure to leave a thumbs up down below and if you don't want to miss out on any of my other content you can also click the subscribe button that helps me out so so much but with that being said that is going to be it for me guys thank you so so much for watching this video and I can't wait to see you in the next one bye guys